Welcome, Tech Heads, to episode 295. How are you doing this week? It's uh, Glenn and Eric with you again this week. Will is still at work. He's been at work for the last month. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Will, just tell them that you got other things to do. you got a life. So, uh, you know, we, ne- we need your tech... We need your tech head on, and we need your tech head here to uh, tell us to bring us up the speed about Android. Which um, I've got a couple of Android stories tonight, so uh, and some good ones. I think I, f- I, I, I fear, I fear some good ones. Is there such a thing as a good Android story? Uh, well, hopefully, I don't know. I want to get your opinion on a, on a, on one or two of these things, and uh, we'll see how we go. But uh, welcome to the lounge. Lounge always joins us on uh, Thursday nights, seven thirty from seven thirty. Uh, live dot the dot com for the recording of the show live. If you want to watch the video back, you can on YouTube dot com forward slash the secret hub, and you also can Skype into the show lo- uh, from Skype on Aussie Tech Heads. That's the you know the little. Uh, the Skype handle thing that you use. Uh, you can also get a paper delivered to your inbox, always free or into your little, you know, iPad thing. Uh, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. And uh, always thanks to Brad and the Tech Webcast guys for their sh- repeat of their show at 7 o'clock before the show every Thursday night, techwebcast.info. Uh, Eric, welcome. Yes, it's been All a right. big week. Has been a little bit, been a bit busy. How about you? Well, uh, yes, I've been a little bit busy as you, well. You've been ill as well. I, I has yes, I have. I'm just I'm getting over it still today. But uh, yeah, yesterday I just um, look. I think it had been coming on for a little while, and yeah, and today I just feel a lot better actually. So it's good. good. And la- on last last week I bought the tech mobile. Yes, you'll have a picture of that up for everyone. I spoke. I hope. Oh, it's on the it's on the Facebook page. Oh, well, but not everyone. On no, <laughs> they probably don't. But look, I'll uh, well, it's a Nissan Cube. Let's look. I'll see if I can find one here. Uh, Nissan, just so you can you can have a look for those guys in the lounge and for those on the video. It's not this color. It is, and it is an actual cube. What do you mean? It looks like a milk crate on wheels. <laughs> That's a later, mo- <laughs> that's a later model. Hang on, I'll get a. <laughs> there you go. It's a milk crate on wheels without the milk. There you go. Hang on, I'll show you the exact. Oh, look, why don't I just bring up my Facebook page? That'd be easy, wouldn't it? It would be because it's got you in the car, looking like a, a, a cat, with a mouse in its uh, mouth. I was, <laughs> I was doing the uh, Reuben Kincaid. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, let's see if we can log into Facebook. I don't normally log into Facebook on this silly... On, oh, no. Don't crash the computer. <laughs> no, I don't, point. I don't log in onto this, uh, on the, on this account. Hang on. Edit point. No, I've got it. Have no fear. Have no fear. Now, how do I get into mine... Oh, I know this is riveting, riveting for the audio listeners. It's good for the audio. <laughs> oh, no. Hello, people from overseas. Don't turn <laughs> off right now. If you're having your breakfast or your lunch, don't throw up. Just bear with us. We'll be there soon. There we go. How's that? <laughs> so, yeah, there's the old cubicle. And um, so it's all good. It's got the nice wheels. It's got the, it's got the nice colour. It's got, you know... The, the the good looking dude in there driving it out of I the. I think that colour is called aubergine. Oh really? I'm colour blind. Yes. I I just been told or, it was like a bit of a purple. Yeah, eggplant. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so yeah, go on to the uh, Facebook. Look, I'll I'll post it onto the Aussie Tech Heads uh, fan page and um, go from there. All right. Otherwise, just watch the video. So all right. So we better get on to something more serious, other than that sort of stuff. What else has been going on? I've got to, well, we better get moving because there's a heap of stories. Well, just to follow up a bit from a couple of weeks and last week, the the big compact Q. I don't know if I mentioned last week went for about 250 bucks on eBay. So, uh, what? Well, you know, the compact Q, the Q from compact, Q. compact the computer. Oh, that little PDF thing. PDF. No, the the neon sign thing that fell down off the compact building. Someone took and. Oh yes, the Q. The Q. Two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. The Q. Did the uh, did the uh, the the constabulary come around and arrest the person for dealing in stolen goods? No, they couldn't be bothered. <laughs> it, was only, it was only a Q. If he had to have the whole, if he had had the C, they might have. 
Um, now, and also, I remember last week I said I had a buzzing in my computer. Now, I'm just going to bring this up because it might, <laughs> might be a bit of a tip for everyone. <laughs> now, we had a few suggestions. And one of the suggestions which I was leaning towards was the uh, CPU fan. So, um, so look, I went, I went and bought another fan. Look at this. Went and bought another fan. There we go. There's the fan. Can't, can't hear another, what, the, the dodgy one? No, no, no. That's the new one. Because guess what? The problem wasn't the fan. <laughs> I got into the Oh, my God. Oh, what was no. it? I got into the computer. And uh, so before I took everything out, like, I, you know, I put, I put my finger on the fan to slow it down to stop it. The buzzing was still there. So I let that go. Then I did, uh, you're probably not supposed to do it like this, but I was determined to find the, the, the buzzing noise. So then I put my, you know, finger in the middle of the, the graphics card fan, you know, slow it down to stop. So yes. buzzing still going. I'm thinking, what, uh, what the hell other piece of buzzing thing is there in this machine? And I thought, oh, don't tell me it's a power supply. No, I don't want it to be the power supply. So anyway, I had another power supply there, so I took the power supply out. This is, this is oh, over no. the period of like an hour because I'm on the floor upside down. And uh, so I took the power supply out, put another one in, and uh, buzzing's still there. Could you believe oh. it? So I thought, what is going on? And then, so anyway, had the screwdriver out, you know. <laughs> this is highly technical. Had the screwdriver out, you know, with the, with the thing up in your ear, and then I put the, the metal part onto the chips to see which chip was screaming. Yes. <laughs> I knew it wasn't a chip. It wasn't a chip. It was the PC speaker. Oh, that little right. thing there. It must cost about 20 cents. This thing. So now it hasn't what got a... pain a, in the ass. I oh know. So now it hasn't got a speaker inside it. But who cares? Well, that's okay. No one uses that PC speaker oh, anyway. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. But anyway, that's, that's, that's how I fixed my machine. So that's good. And also I installed good. Windows 8 on the laptop. Oh, yeah, good one. Yeah, it goes good. It goes good. It's uh, brought the machine. Well, the laptop was starting to you know, get a bit slow and all this sort of stuff. So I thought, well, I'm either going to format it back to Windows 7 or I'm just, I'll download Windows 8, give it a shot. Now, it goes okay. It goes great. It's fast. It's responsive. Don't know about the seven-second boot up. I haven't really timed it. But it is fairly fast. Uh, the, the only thing I don't know really what to do is how to start stuff because there's no start button. And unless you've got an icon on the screen, I'm not sure how to actually get to your Oh, no, you, do, you press, you know, the, on the keyboard, the mic, that Microsoft symbol? Yeah, but right, that, you press that. Well, that brings you back to... Yeah, and then I think you, if you press escape when you're on the, into the, in the tiles, it'll go to the, um, what you call it? Hang it'll on. go back, to, press escape, and it should go back into the normal desktop. All right. Well, I'll show you here. This is the laptop on there now, just with the, just with the 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 handy cam. Now, if you want me to, I'll push the uh, push the Windows button, and I'll get Metro. Right. Now you want me to push. Escape. Escape. Yeah. Go back to the desktop. But look down there. See, there's no start button. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. Or click Explorer. Is there an Explorer tile? Um, I don't know. Mail, people, messaging, desktop, weather, video. Desktop. Desktop. Desktop? But click that goes desktop. back to there. Oh, that. That's back. Ah. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's hard, eh? So anyway, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to Google that. Well done, Microsoft. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's very intuitive, it's isn't crap. it? It's very it's intuitive. Well, what the oh, hell? That's why I'm, I'm going to put Linux on my my unused laptop here. Look, I thought I, th I thought I could have done it through here. It took me all my time just to put this little to put a little desktop. Hang on, this little desktop thing on the toolbar. I thought, oh, geez, that might help me out here, but um, no, no. So I'm not really sure how to see lock task manager show the desktop toolbars, address touch keyboard. Look, I don't know how to. I don't know. It's that's that's pretty bad, isn't it? Anyway. Yeah, it is bad. That's very bad. But I suppose. Very, very. But I suppose what well, would you say? Well, Apple don't have a start button. Um, but they've got the programs already loaded up into the what do you call it? The dock, I suppose. Um. Yeah, I don't know. You got to have an icon on the screen, haven't you, to start the Apple program as well? Yes. 
So I suppose that might be the way they want to work things. You got to have the icon on so the screen. So they're basically copying Apple again. But then, but then I installed TweetDeck onto the machine. Yeah. But it didn't put an icon on the desktop. I can't open it. I don't know how to so, get there. So you don't know it. where it is? No, I, I don't know. I've got to. I've got to go around and Google how to get like a programs menu or something up. Anyway. Okay. Well, I'm going to paste in the chat here, and you don't have to read this now. Um, how to get the how to get the classic start menu back in Windows 8? Here we go. Yeah, but why, why do they? Why would they do that? It shouldn't have to be this hard. Sorry, this is not good audio for the listeners, but sometimes you get so frustrated trying to use something. Uh, Windows 8, well done. Yeah. So that's anyway. All right. Well, let's move on because well, anyway, look, the, the thing goes good. It, it's it's light. It's responsive, and uh, yeah, it's good. So um. Uh, once you get this, okay, how to get the classic bar back? But Windows can create toolbars, blah 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 blah. Yeah, okay, I'll it's do a that. Bit comp- it's a, it's very complicated, but it would, but it works. It's but hopeless. It, but what are you supposed to do? Like, what are you supposed to do? Anyway, all right, yeah, leave that alone. Leave that alone. The corporations aren't going to go for this. Nah, no, maybe not yet. Look, maybe the the. Well, this is like a pre-release, isn't it? That's probably too, it's not. That's even too late to probably it's, put it in. But. It's it's pretty much close to being Gold Master. Yeah, which is the final one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, that's that's the way they want to do it. All so, right then. Well, in more in more Microsoft news, the big news of the week um, was the Surface. Yeah. Microsoft Surface tablet thingy majig. No no pricing. I love their releases. It's so they so it's so uncertain. No pricing. Mm. Um, no when it's going to be available, and uh, no app store. But you know, I, but it looks all right. But the thing yes. looks good. You know, I think this is going to be probably the closest thing to an iPad killer. I, I really do. Mm. Oh, look, you know what? Hardware wise, I think you're right. But if they can't get this software right, they are gone. I think they're going to get it right because it's just it's going to be. An extension of your desktop, as well as as a as a mobile as a pad, so that well, yes. the, yeah, with, as far as with the keyboard, you mean? Well, yeah, and, and for what you can do because it's going to be completely compatible and, and oh, it is yeah, hundred percent. There's no that's what I like about it. It's yeah. a small unit. You can flip the keyboard down if you want. If you're on the road and you want to actually type a word document, it's a word document. It's not a dumbed down version of a word document. That's right. Now look, I'll, um, so that aspect is very good. But you know what worries me the most? It's not. It's not the fact that it's a f- it, it, everything on there is full blown. What worries me is the interface. Look at that on the screen there. Oh, look at my notes. Put it on the mm. screen. That is just an infantile kindergarten um, user interface. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I don't. I don't like the metro. Uh, maybe I'll get used to it. I don't know, but um, I don't like it. But look, it, it, look, it's thin enough. There's going to be two versions of this Microsoft tablet. Let, let, it, let it be said that it is a Microsoft piece of hardware. Okay. It's well, you know what? I'm not going to get the first version. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the second one. Well, you've got here. Not the, it's not, the, it's not the. I'm not saying I won't get the the first one, as in the small one, and but I'll buy the bigger one. No, I'll wait till the second generation comes out. Because mm. I think this one, they're gonna. They always. Everybody has problems with the first generation of anything. Yeah. You know. Well, anyway, so some specs on this little Microsoft. Oh, where, where the where did it go? I lost it. All right. So the, there's some specs on this thing. See if you care, but it's. Uh, but I do. It's 9.3 millimeters thick. So it's effectively a 10-inch screen. Yeah, full-size USB port, magnesium case. It weighs, I think about, uh, it says here 1.5 pounds, but that equates to about 960 grams, I think it is, which is about 300 more than the iPad. Yeah, it's heavier. Yeah, so 10.6 inch display, built-in kickstand. I don't think you could read a book on this in bed without getting a sore arm. Too heavy. Um, Magnetic cover, similar to the uh, Apple. Yeah, similar. It's got a uh, keyboard cover accessory, is just three millimeters thick. So there's two yeah. versions, the uh, Windows RT and the Windows Pro, which will run. So the RT will, will be running on the the smaller, lighter ARM version. And the Windows... You know, that's another mistake. They should just have one freaking iPad. Well, you know, and make an iPad. Is it, you know, 64 gig capacity or 128? Hmm. You know, 
why they have different processes and all that. It's just a mess. It's but a mess. Maybe price points. Um, oh, yeah, but you can do price points based on storage, like Apple does. Yeah, the Pro version is a bit thicker and heavier, 14 millimeters thick. It mm, weighs that slightly. won't sell. That won't yeah, sell. Pro version has a perimeter venting to keep the device cool. Um, the Pro version is essentially a full desktop PC. So, well, then yeah. you'd buy a laptop. Why would you buy this? Uh, well, a touchscreen, and plus, I suppose it's not a not a, 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 a fold outable thing. But you know, a fold, also, a you remember that's laptops? A, Windows Eight is made for touch screens regardless of where you put it on and a lot of the laptops are already touch screen now yeah, okay because yeah. when i was in this in in america uh three years ago i was in um what's that store called best buy best buy yeah massive place and they were selling um acer laptops in there you know nine inch nine inch uh, ten inch netbooks yeah. with windows 7 touch screen yeah. Because right. Windows Seven's got a touch touch screen interface. If you've got the right screen for it, it'll work. Yeah. Um, so in which case, if you're going to spend that this sort of cash on this sort of weight, you might as well get a laptop. Mm. Oh, I, I think anyway, personally. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I'd, you'd have to you'd have to have a look at what the laptops are available. I think the whole idea is if if a laptop can be as thin as that and say keyboard folds back on itself, then well, it's going to come down to price. Because if it's the yeah. same price of a laptop, then what are you going to do? Hmm. Yeah, well, it's got, that, well, a, is it, it got a 3G? Is it, does anyone know whether it's coming with a 3G chip in it or not? Uh, not or in a 4G my, chip? Not in my specs Or is it just here. Wi-Fi and, and that's it? Yeah, not in my specs here. Yeah, I couldn't anything. see anything either. Mm, that's a but good. look, nevertheless, I like the look of them. Um, I'm not sure it's um, light enough. Uh, I, I think I'll wait for the second generation because I think the second generation will be lighter. Mm. They always, because they always make advances in these things, and I think the only concern is whether or not that interface is going to be um, is going to frustrate the hell out of people. Yes, well, I suppose maybe that maybe if it's a touchy feely thing, you know, maybe it'll all work on that type and of interface. They've got to have apps. Yeah, they've got to have apps. Well, we're talking about those those things. You see, the current users of the Windows Phone, so Windows Phone Seven, they won't be able to upgrade their phone to Windows Eight. We'll see. So, that's wrong too. Yeah, so so the software will bring Windows phones closer to PCs. This is the eight Windows eight upgrade. Yeah. Will bring the phones, the Windows phones, closer to PCs and the tablets running the um, the the different the two different versions of uh, Windows eight. I wonder. I wonder if when, for example, they bring out Windows nine, that they'll do the same thing again. Like I'll say, sorry, you got to get a new phone because that phone won't run Windows nine. Yeah, I don't know what the thing is, but it says here changing its phone software at such a basic level means that it will be difficult to install on existing Windows phones. So Nokia they must have done a complete rewrite. They'd have to. So Nokia, which which I read also today, is um, is shedding what ten thousand jobs globally. So they're yeah. obviously in a bit of trouble. But anyway, but Nokia. Keep that in mind, shedding some 10,000 jobs. But Nokia has said that uh, that um, they've got no intention to ditch Windows 7 on the phones. It's expected the older phone, the older Windows Phone 7, is expected to live up to their expectations despite the release of what mm. will be an incompatible upgrade. All right. Well, in, ne in two years' time, they'll be ditching another 10,000 people because you've got to keep up. Yeah. Well, uh, that's, I read those that's two crazy. stories. And who's, I, running, who's running Nokia? I know. Which deadhead is running Nokia? What, like, You've got to keep up. People aren't going to go, I want to go and get a new phone. Oh, I'm going to go and buy an old version. Like, that's, Meanwhile, you know, that's iPhone 6 is out that does everything but wipe your backside. <laughs> you know, yeah. oh, I'm going to go back to, um, you know, Symbian. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, Symbian will sell. Don't worry about it. That's yeah. very um, arrogant and narrow-minded. They've got to really... They're behind the eight ball as it is. Mm. Look, they've probably invested... They've probably invested a lot of money in the Windows 7 phones. And, and yep, fair enough, they, they, they probably have. But it's just time to Well, then they on. should have a word to Microsoft. What? Because Microsoft should have been... They're supposed to be in some sort of partnership. Shouldn't you think Microsoft would have said, hey, guys, can you make some adjustments with your hardware so that when Windows 8 comes out, it'll just be a seamless exercise? Yeah. And um, Microsoft is uh, going to spend over a billion dollars to buy Yammer. Just Yammer. as a little side note. Yeah, have you heard of Yammer? Um, sort of. I'm not sure what they do. What do they do? Yammer is like Twitter, but it's a closed Twitter. 
Oh, right. So it's only for like uh, for use within your organisation. So that's handy. I know a few people right. that use it. Yep, yep. A lot of organ. Yeah, fair enough. Yep. Like a messaging system within corporations. Well, it's Twitter, like little yep. short messages, but within uh, but in a closed environment. So Yammer was founded in 2008. It's more than 200,000 companies as customers, including Ford, Nationwide and 7-Eleven and more than 4 million users. So um, That's not bad. 2008, a uh, billion dollars. That's good. Yeah. Seems to be the bu- the buzz figure, doesn't it? A billion? Billion, yeah, pretty if much. Microsoft, uh, pretty much. If you you wouldn't want to be too greedy if they offered you a billion, you just take it, wouldn't you? Yeah. It doesn't matter what you had. <laughs> It wouldn't matter what it was, just take it. <laughs> because it's like going into the den. You know, you take what you, you're offered. And, uh, that's right. You know, you, know, you know that Dragon's Den show? Mm, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, not, that's not a bad show. And Yeah, so, yeah, cool, Bill. And I think Facebook, they've bought Face.com for a bill, some facial recognition software. Yeah, that's going to probably, I, that's going to be on their Facebook phone, I guarantee it. It's going to be funny. Uh, Facebook. You know, there's all these rumours about the Facebook phone. Oh, yeah, good old Facebook yeah, phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Oh, this is just everything. It's just so, it's so funny. I'd like to just take a snapshot of what we're talking about right now and then look, come back in, oh, gee, I was going to say five years, come back in 12 months and yeah. see <laughs> see the ruins just strewn, strewn about us. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. I think, uh, I, well, yeah, yeah, I think that Nokia decision – to keep going with Windows Seven, I think that's a bad one. God, they're, 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 they're up. They've got. They're up to Windows Seven point five. So, I wonder which version are they running? Yeah, I don't know. I think they're basing their their decision on the apps and stuff. But I mean, like if this Windows Eight tablet kicks on, the apps are just going to be rewritten to be compatible, and everyone's going to move on in life. Everyone, see, all the developers are developing for Windows Eight because they're jumping yep. with it because that's where you make your money. You're not going to keep developing for an old operating system when everyone's jumping on Windows 8. That's right. right. That's right. And the tablets have come out and then the desktops have come out and everyone's buying apps, blah, blah, blah. What were you going to do? Oh, no, you know what, guys? I'll leave you to it. I'm going to go back to 1956 <laughs> and uh, and um, get a horse and buggy out. Yeah, that's right. You know? <laughs> so there's going to be no apps. So it's going to be a dead system. It's going to be it's going to be like Latin. Yeah. Latin? Extinct. Extinct. Now, now we'll just move away from Microsoft and phones for a bit. I have, I do have another little iPhone and Apple story later on, but we'll just move away from these for a second. Now the Sydney Morning Herald, the Age, they're going to a paywall system next year. They're uh, in trouble. So you've got you've got the Sydney Morning Herald iPad app. So have I. Uh, they've, they've just yep. up, upgraded to a new version, which is now in the newsstand on the iPad. Uh, did you get that version? Uh, it's sitting there somewhere. I haven't, I haven't turned my iPad on for a while. Okay. I'm sure it's in there. So they're going to go to a metered approach, a paywall that's like a metered approach, like the New York Times, which means that, you know, you can have whatever, 10, 10 free pages. 10 pa- pages or whatever. Or free. Or 10, and, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So New York Times, they, uh, visitors get 10 free articles, um, including a blog post, slideshows, videos, and other multimedia features. Each calendar month, as well as access to browse the homepage, blah blah blah. Yeah, so uh, if you want any more, oh, each calendar month. I thought it was ten per day. No, it's only uh, each calendar month. month. Oh, God, as well as access That's to, tough. yeah, browse the homepage section fronts, blog fronts, and classified so subscribers enjoy unrestricted access to all of the content on the New York Times, and one hundred archive articles every four week weeks. So even mm. if you subscribe. You're still limited to 100 archive articles, which is probably fair enough. But what's an archive? Yesterday? Yeah, exactly. Like, what does that yeah. mean? Also, uh, there are, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's New York Times. Who cares? But that's the way it's going to go. So the Sydney Morning Herald, the age next year, look out for the paywall. Well, they're doing it because they're losing money. Their shares have gone from $6 in 2005 or something down to $0.60 because mm. um, that's a reflection of their earnings. And um, I have one thing to say to the, the people of Sydney Morning Herald. Come out with good content, and you'll get advertisers. Yeah. If you have a good, if you had a good advertisers, you wouldn't need a paywall, and your earnings will go up. Stop, stop coming out with the dribbling socialist left wing crap that you come out with, and sack your journalists, and you might be all right. <laughs> look, I uh, look, I, I don't mind reading the City Morning Herald on the iPad. I find, I find it it's a really good. Well, I find it's a it's a good. Uh, version, or it's a, well, it's pretty well put together. Not not saying from the point of view of the actual content, but it's it's well. Just the format. 
Yeah, the format's good. Like you go to abc.net.au or whatever, the ABC site on the iPad, or even the BBC for that matter, it's not as uh, n- nicely constructed as the iPad. Yeah, as, I agree. You know, I agree with that. Uh, I agree with that, yeah. Not that I'm sure I'm going to be paying for it. Uh, probably not. Probably not. Yeah, uh, well, they're all going paywall, so you and I are going to be sitting in the dark soon. We don't want to pay for it. No, but you just go and grab the... Um, ABC or the BBC news. It's all the same. Yeah. No, it's that's all the true. Same. It is all the same. Anything that it's all the same. Uh, TBG uh, has been fined $2 million over broadband ads. Yes. Now, what was that over? So what they, was that about? Yeah, so the courts found that advertising, uh, they were <laughs> advertising twenty nine ninety nine for unlimited ADS, ADSL 2 Plus was misleading. <laughs> Because the offer had to be bound with the phone line rental, so it was so it was unlimited ADSL two plus for for twenty nine ninety nine. But to get that, you had to pay another fee for the phone rental. For the phone, right? So it was misleading. Yeah. So in a, in a June fifteen judgment, the court ruled that TBG had breached section fifty two, section fifty three e, and section fifty three g of the nineteen seventy four Trade Practices Act. So go on and have a read of that before you go to bed. Mm. See what That's right. Did. Section six. Studied that at university. Oh, did you? That would have been probably the same. Wouldn't have even been revised. It's probably been the same. Since oh, they you... haven't changed it. No, nah, same since you studied. Uh, what they, have, th- they haven't changed it. Did you have any more stories? I have lots. Do you, um, do you want to go somewhere with one? Yes, let's <laughs> go. Hang on. I've got, uh, got one here. Uh, Oracle CEO... Larry Ellison buys the Hawaiian island of Lanai. Can you buy islands? Well, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he Oracle CEO. There's an. There's a. Um, I tried to um, do a screenshot of the Hawaiian islands. It's um, Hawaiian islands. There's there's more, four main islands. There's uh, um, oh god, Oahu, which is where Honolulu is, the main you know like the main tourist island. Yeah. There's Hawaii. Which is called the Big Island, right? So it's called Hawaii itself. There's um, uh, Maui, yep, obviously another island, and um, there's one more which I can't remember the name. And then there's Lanai, and there's a couple of little smaller ones. It's okay. called this one's called Lanai. So this okay. is these, these anyway are owned by the US. Well, I'll read it. Oh, okay. He has bought 98 percent of the Hawaiian island of Lanai, according to a statement from the governor of Hawaii. Democratic government Neil Abercrombie said, It is my understanding that Mr. Ellison has had a long standing interest in Lanai. His passion for nature, particularly the ocean, is well known specifically in the realm of America's Cup sailing. Ellison bought the island from Castle and Cook, right. whose owner, stay with me, David, David Murdoch, is also the major stockholder. Holder, of a company called the Dole Food Company, D-O-L-E Food Company. Dole Food Company is huge. It's massive. Well, I've never heard of it. So he bought it from the owner of the Dole Food Company. Yeah, okay. Lanai once grew 75% of the world's pineapples. Jeez. Wow. Right. That's their biggest export is fruit. According to Castle & Cook's website, the company employs half of the island's 3,000 residents. Wow. So they're still processing food and picking fruit and everything there. And he's in the process of constructing a solar farm with the goal of making the entire entire island operate on renewable energy. Ellison is number six on the Ford's billionaires list worth $36 billion. But he's not the only billionaire to buy his own island. Richard Branson owns a private island in the British Virgin Islands called Necker. N-E-C-K-E-R, Necker Island. Look it up. There's pictures everywhere. Yeah, Beautiful place. Yes, um, but Branson has a reason to be a little bit envious because Br- Ellison's Island is 1,100 times larger. Oh, jeez. <laughs> there you go. So, so I wonder how, like, you know, that just, just makes you wonder how it all works, isn't it? Like, so, because I suppose if you had enough money, you could buy a small line. You just buy every block on the oh, island. Oh, you can. Mel Gibson's you... got an island of, of Fiji. Yeah, okay. Um, Do you, you, still... can, you can buy an island. But so this You can one buy that... them for as little as $50,000. But this little one that what's his name Ellison did you say the Oracle? Well, it's dude? not that little, but it's littler than the you know. But this one that probably, he bought, it's probably as big as Sydney, the oh. island. So okay, yeah, so metropolitan he's, Sydney. So he's bought this, so he'd be it's part of Hawaii. 
It is part of Hawaii. So he'd be paying. It's governed by Hawaii, but he right. owns the island. So he'd be paying rates. Yes. And so well, he'd the be... people pay rates. The people pay rates to him. Oh, I see. He's the owner. He's the council. He's the he's the dude. But who's then responsible? That would Hawaii not be responsible for the roads and the infrastructure? Oh yeah, they would be. But you know, the councils. What what the councils do? They get funding. So he's subletting. Um, they... <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. Um, look, in a normal council, you you pay your rates, and that goes towards garbage and water and sewage and all that sort of stuff, right? Yeah. So that would probably still be the same thing over there. And there would be other things the federal government would do, like um, roads and schools, for example. Right. Okay. So. You know? Okay, but then, but then, what's the advantage of owning an island? Then, like, do you think, like, is it, is it, well, can you make your own? Do rules? what he wants. Well, if he wants to build a house, he yeah. doesn't need he doesn't need DA approval, does he? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right. Well, anyway, that's good. <laughs> that's good. You need. Well, it doesn't say how much he paid for it, so I have no idea. Yeah, probably be a, a billion. You uh, quote, yeah, one billion. It yeah. seems to me the magic figure. So that's right. That's a billion dollars. Now Telstra's probably going to spend a billion dollars on their music streaming site, Mog. Yeah, that's that's ro- that's know. rubbish. It's rubbish. Not gonna work. No, it won't work. Telstra has entered the music online streaming arena with the launch of Mog. M O G. dot com. Oh, Mog. Mog. What's it, what's Mog stand for? Music on G. G. <laughs> the online music directory features 16 million tracks at 320k p k b p s quality. Right, so good quality. Yep. It's available on PC, digital music players, Apple and Android smartphones. Tablets and wireless hi fi systems. Telstra is currently offering a two week free trial of the music service and has thrown in an added incentive woo-hoo, for Telstra customers. Woohoo! Streaming data charges will also be free during the trial. Wow. You might actually download, well, if you downloaded, what, a thousand songs in mm. two weeks, so they're, th- what, five meg each. So you've yeah. downloaded, what, well, that'd be about five gig, wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe, give or take. And that's nothing. You got to play in a two hundred. Who cares? So, following the trial period, Telstra will charge six ninety nine a month and eleven ninety nine uh, for additional streaming via mobile devices. There's no free service. Uh, I couldn't. Right. I, I got on there. I couldn't. I wanted to search for a song. I couldn't search without signing up. I didn't even bother signing right. up. Right, you got to. You got to go in. Didn't bother. I've got the Spotify. Well, you should have just done the trial. I couldn't be bothered. Yeah, me neither. I don't like I've got Spotify. Oh, I've got the free. You just download that. That's free. You can listen to anything in their library for free. Can you download it off Spotify or you can just stream? Ah, uh, stream. Yeah. Right. You, stri- you download the program. The program. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, well, you just stream. You don't need to download. Uh, if the free version. Yes. You can listen to it numerous times. Well, whenever you want. It's not, you can't <laughs> do it. <laughs> you can't do it. PA, on PA is put in the... Chat room, MOG sounds for Melbourne Orthodontic <laughs> Group. <laughs> well, I tell you, searching for a song was like pulling teeth. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't do it. Yes, well, there you go. <laughs> so maybe you, you might be on the right track there. Uh, yeah, so... It's got to be... A, now, PA, this is a job for you, PA. Uh, MOG, you've got to come up with something that has Gillard in it because it's for the G. So leave it to you. And the first word can't be mole. So... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Because be. that wouldn't be appropriate. Now, yeah. So anyway, well, that's, that's no. Well, of course not. She's our prime minister. Now that's mog. That's mog. Now that's uh, look that's for me. Um, pfft, gotta have a free one in there, haven't you? If Spotify is doing a free bit, they've got to have a free one somewhere. They've got to. They've got to. Yeah. They've got to. Yeah. Got to. Just got to. I don't know if there's because I I actually wanted to see if the same songs were in both. You know. Yeah. Which I guess they were sixteen million songs. How many songs are there on the planet? But, well, uh, probably sixteen million. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I think their search, their search engine is probably not that good. Hmm, probably not. Now, let's flick back to Windows. All right. Windows eight. Now they announced the tablet on one day, and they announced Windows eight on another day for the phone. Windows Phone eight on another day. I'm right. just wondering why they didn't have, you know, a, like a, like Apple does, or a lot of even Nokia, like. Here are our new products upcoming, and they release and they talk about two things or whatever. Why would they have two different events? Well, I know I why. Don't I don't understand that. I can tell you why. Because especially when they're so closely integrated. 
Yes, but they probably they don't want each uh, each to overshadow the other. That'd be why. That's well, the, their products must be pretty damn shitty if that's if that's what they're worried about. But I reckon that's what it is. Like that. Well, I reckon you're right. That, that'd have to be it. Like they want they want the press to be about the the tablet. Then a week later or whatever, they want the press to be about... Well, it's two days. Well, two days later. About so they, the cu- they cut short the news cycle for the tablet by anyway after two days. It's stupid. Yeah. Well, yeah, true. We look at that way as well. Yeah, look like They should have got up there and seen and showed everyone how the phone integrates so well with, with the, the tablet. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And a desktop. Everyone had gone, oh, what a great sweetest. Everything integrates. Oh, if I buy this one, it's cool. If I buy that one, it's cool. If I buy both of them, it's even better. They, you know, yep. it's just, duh. Yeah, so anyway, that's what they want to do. Maybe they like breakfast. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's just, well, you don't know, know. Don't know, I'm dying to... I saw a Windows phone in Telstra about a year ago. And and I had my... No, yeah, two years ago. I had my um, eight-year-old with me. And I had, had my 12-year-old with me. This is when I was just getting my 12-year-old her iPhone. Yeah. Just before she started high school, right? Yep. And we're in the Telstra shop, and the little eight-year-old's running around having a look, you know. And this is how I infantile I think it looks. She looked at all the phones, and she said, she came and goes, I think I found one I like. And she pointed out, eight-year-old, yeah. the Windows phone. Yeah. Because that's it, that's what appealed to her. It, did it have the... So me- it's appealing to eight-year-olds. Was this with the, the, the Metro interface? Yep, yep. Well, do you know Windows why? Windows 7. Do you know why? When you Why? look at the Metro interface, it's uh, squares, so they're nice, yep. nice, uh, compact, square, you know, solid sort of shapes, and plus they're all primary colours, pretty much. There's the red, greens, well, and blues. Well, that's it. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's why I keep play, saying it's such an colours. infantile u- u- um, user mm. interface that it is actually appealing to people younger than 12. Yeah. And that's not the market they want because those people have no money. <laughs> but then again, you know, like I just went through my iPad last night and I put all the I, – I've got a few versions of the Angry Birds, you know, the little the, – the kids like Angry Birds. So I've downloaded Rio and, and Space yeah. and whatever else. But that's what I mean. But, it's for the kids. But, but You're what doing I was, it for the kids. But what I did with the Angry Birds was because I had so many, I put them into – you know how you can put your apps icons into like another folder, into a yes. thing? Yes, yes. Well, that's what I did with the Angry Birds and all the games and everything because I was starting to get pages and pages of apps. And look, I, I just wondered if I could change the look of the, the folder, if you know what I mean. Yep. But uh, yep. You, you probably can, I don't know. But no, may- you can't. But maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what Microsoft is getting at, you know, like they've got the square boxes. So you, you push, if you want apps, you push the app box. If you want games, you push the game box. If you want whatever, you push the whatever box. Well, I don't know. Well, I, you know what? That's fine. You can still do that. But make it look a little bit more stylish, mm. you know, rounded edges or something, and yeah. stop using primary colours. Like I'm in kindergarten about to finger paint. <laughs> but anyway, well, getting off Microsoft now, we've we've done them to death. Which I, look, oh god, it's the most press they've had in a week, in a year, in, in ten years. Yeah, and look, I I just honestly think uh, my next tablet, I will wait for the Microsoft one. I do want one. I will I will wait. I, I will one. get one, mm. no I'll doubt about it. But I'm going to wait until the second generation because I think you know the MacBook Air when it came out five years ago it was a disaster you wouldn't touch it but now holy Jesus yeah, and I think I think this tablet if they do it right will be the same yep yep alright so let's uh, go to something else Kogan our good friends <laughs> yes well, Russ Land now Kogan he's oh the, the Android tablets are back for one ninety nine. Oh, they're back have you ordered one no I, I look. I, I I was pretty. Look, I was. I was nearly going to. I was nearly going to push the button, and then I thought, look, what can't we? Can't we find out? Can't someone have a review of these? You know, like what, have has, you know what? Has the you first can, batch arrived? Who's the manufacturer? Because Glenn, you're in a perfect position. You are now for fully tech business, right? Yeah. But the car's going to have whatever it is that you're going to call your business on the side and whatnot. Yep. And you are in a position now to. Um, ask for re- for review units to talk about on the show, right? And then send it back. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, look, but I, actually, with these Kogan things, I don't think they've actually uh, arrived in Australia. The the last batch, as far as I can see, just from searching around the like went through the whirlpool 
uh, website and stuff is they they've been pushed back from a June. 15 or mm. something release uh, to mm. later June. So I thought they might have been in by now. But these ones, the ones that are currently up for sale on the Kogan site are uh, not available till mid-July. Uh, look, I, I'm in two minds. I am hang really... On, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. The Agora 10-inch $9199 add to cart. They're available. No, doesn't it say July? Um, let me see. Um, can you continue to check out? Let's see. Sorry about this. That's all right. Uh, I, I will. I will talk about something else while you do. You go along that little that little thing. But I'm also, I was to see what it says. But also on the Kogan site, you may like to have a look at the TV dongle. Now, Kogan's launched an Android-based dongle that plugs into your TV's HDMI port to offer internet access. So it's like a, it turns your TV into a smart TV. How, how good would mm. that be? So if you've got an old TV and, you know, you wish it wanted, wanted to make it a bit smarter, go and bung one of those little dongles in. They're about 99 bucks, And it includes remote control. So it's... Uh, it's uh, I think they're available right now, mate, because there's nothing on there that says it's three weeks delivery. Yeah, rightio. Look, the only thing, what am I worried about? Um, oh, I just don't know. I, I don't know what I'm worried about. I, I'm worried about... It not being fast enough. It's a one gig processor. I'm worried about it not being fast enough. I'm worried about, for some reason, there's issues about certain apps don't run on certain hardware. Well, that's not the it's problem of the. That's not the problem of the device. It's a problem of the operating system. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Look. It, it's two hundred for the one I want. I want to get the sixteen gig one. So. Uh, yeah, you've I'll, got to get the full one. I'll sleep. Oh, on here it. we go. Yeah. It preaches a pre-sale. The spa- It's the dispatch sixteenth of July. Oh, there's yeah. no way I'm paying for that now. Yeah, so I thought, well, by the 16th of July, hopefully the first batch has arrived and people have had some reviews. So that's, that's my But the worst thing, thing is, because no Android the way it is, by 16th of July there's going to be another tablet that's out. Because they bring one out every four bloody weeks. Yeah. Yeah, so sure. who knows? Yeah, who knows? But anyway, go back to the dot. That's that thing. So if you want to have a look at that, go on and check that out. It's, what, it's 199 for a, a 10-inch, what, 16 gig? Tablet with all 16 of, gig tablet, which yep. are, with a lot of the bells and whistles. So yep. it's it's a it's not a resisti- resistive screen. It's the other one, you know, the nice little static the, the touch. Rule, yep, yep. Um. So so it's, it, it it could be a good it could be a good thing. But I, look, I, because it's sixteenth of July, I just want to wait until the first batch has arrived and and people have had a yeah. a, a play. Uh, and well, you've heard some of the reviews will start coming out, and then you might actually um, mm. you know, that might determine whether or not you get it because two hundred dollars. Is two hundred dollars. Uh, now go, right. go, going back to this Kogan TV dongle. Now look, uh, tech heads, this show is going to go a little bit longer because there was a, a, a crap load of stories this week that I thought you'd be interested in. So just bear with us. We're going to have Garth in a minute, and uh, going to have Eric's Audible. Have we got an Audible? Um, no, I don't. I ran out of time because it's been a horrible day as well, usual. Well, that's all right because um, that's good because we uh, we we've got a big show anyway. So anyway, so hang yep. with us. Hang with us. So this this HDMI thingy bopper that I've just been talking about looks like that if you're on the video. Uh, connect, uh, so it has built-in Wi-Fi connecting to a home network, runs the latest version of Google Android, which is the ice cream sandwich. The dongle includes 4 gig of onboard storage and supports the connection of a USB thumb drive. It also has a micro SD card slot for expanding its storage. It runs an ARM-based 1 gigahertz uh, Cortex A9 processor along with 4 gig of RAM. Uh, also launched... And I'll show you. Look, you turn your TV. Hang on, I've got another picture here. Turn your TV into a smart TV. There you go. Look at that. Doesn't that look sexy? So that's that. And also launched for $39 is a little keyboard that goes with it. So that looks pretty nifty. A little And a little trackpad on the top there. So, there you, go. you know, so this, all, this little keyboard will also work with your PC, Xbox 360 and PlayStation. So 39 bucks. that doesn't look too bad, does it? That's nice. That, that's some, that's that's that'd be a good broadcast uh, uh, keyboard, actually. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad at all. That's nice little shape. It's a funky little thing. So um, yeah. So there we go. Might might have to. Right, there's, there's there's your show title, the funky little thing. The funky little thing. All right, now moving moving on again, straight on. What have we got? We've done the window stuff. Uh, LinkedIn has been hit with a lawsuit over their data breach. Wouldn't you believe yeah, it? About what, time. Like, what do you reckon? What do you reckon they oh, should be well, shooting? You know, well, someone, you know, the Americans are litigious. They'll sue over anything. Yeah, I, I think it's a bit far-fetched myself. Like, 
Oh, well, on June 6th, users learned that hackers had gained access to the database where 6.5 million LinkedIn passwords were posted now, on this underground forum. So the lawsuit was filed on Monday on behalf of a single subscriber, right? <laughs> a single subscriber to LinkedIn's premium services, uh, some dude in the, or oh, some lady, Katie, in the Illinois. Uh, it's seeking certificate. It's seeking cert- certification as a class action lawsuit on behalf of all LinkedIn users. The, the suit yeah. claims LinkedIn failed to use long-standing industry standard encryption protocols, exposing its users' personally identifiable inf- information. But I mean, it's a networking what, site anyway. What information is on there? That's right. That's, that's you got net- your resume. Yeah. Yeah, there's no address on there. But it's you got a- email address, your resume, uh, and where you've worked. How yeah. bad can it be? You know what? If someone saw my resume, good, good that, for me. But that's what the whole site's about. It's it's a networking yeah, it's, site. That's that's what it's all about. So link. Uh, oh look, someone's just got their bee in there, but oh, I can get some money out yeah, of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a bit of a rubbish story, uh, because of that. Of wah, that. But, wah, it, oh, wah, wah, but wah, isn't wah. it just ridiculous? LinkedIn engaged in in deceptive practices. The suit said, "Well, it didn't. It, it didn't. No, it didn't. It just made a mistake. Yeah. And their IT people need a slap around the head. But that's about it. Yeah. So the industry. Okay, they're calling it that they uh, that they failed to use long-standing industry standard encryption protocols. They weren't LAW law protocols. They were industry standard. They weren't like written in law that you must do it this way. Like you got to. Well, there are many ways to encrypt information. I'm sure, um, and some might say there's a standard you should follow, and that's fair enough. And you might have a moral obligation to do that. And and most a lot of people should follow their moral obligation rather than just a legal one. Mm. But that's really not the point here. Yeah. The point is everyone screws up every now and again. Right. Move on. That's right. Now LinkedIn has come out and uh, yeah, gone, gone. Uh, it's not as if they were, It's not as if it's your banking details. My God. I oh, know. Look, this is just, this Katie girl. She's she's probably living in a Sip, trailer. I'll go. It's it, the, her her name is Katie Sip Ricker. It's a Spurka. S- Sip something. Sip Ricker. Her, like she, she's probably living in a trailer. And she just needs a couple of <laughs> couple of dollars for some food for a hamburger. Yeah, I want to. I want to live in a house that doesn't have four wheels. That's what she's saying. <laughs> so LinkedIn called the suit without merit, and said it would defend it vigorously. No member account has been breached as a result of the incident, and we have no reason to believe that any LinkedIn member has been injured. Therefore, it appears that these threats are driven by lawyers looking to take advantage of the situation. And that's Bingo. pretty much. So now, what the whole password, as you mentioned before, people encrypt passwords and etc. in different ways. And if you're interested. I'll tell you exactly what is happening with the ha- passwords and the encryption. This is a bit, bit of a bit of a more techie, but LinkedIn stored passwords in hashed or encrypted format, but did not salt them as many websites do, meaning it did not add additional random characters to make the encryption difficult, more difficult to break. After being posted in their hashed format, some of the passwords were decrypted. LinkedIn has since began salting the passwords. So according to the lawsuit, LinkedIn also relied on an outmoded hashing format to store passwords and did not adhere to basic security checklists. But like, where, You know? Where? You know, the, they... Yeah, exactly. Where? What, what about, what about Nothing Sony? Nothing to see here. Get, get back in your trailer. Yeah. <laughs> what about Sony? Like, what, what's going yeah. on? You know, all these things. All right. Now, I think we'll do one more little story about the... Tablets, of course, we're still doing tablets, apparently. Well, Optus, is, is that the one you're going to do? Yeah, Optus, exactly. Galaxy Tab, go for your life. Or you can, if you've got it. No, no, go for it. Go for it. So, Optus, Galaxy Tab version 2 is now in Optus stores. You can go get it on it's a plan. It's a good-looking tablet. Good-looking tablet, that one. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Too, too bad it's on the Optus network. True, on the slow network. But it yeah, runs... slow. God. <laughs> it's running ice cream sandwich. It's... Uh, it has the same size screen, 10.1 inch, has the same resolution, 1280 by 800, powered by a 1 gigahertz dual core processor of 1 gig of RAM. Now, see what the thing is. Now, when you look back at that at that uh, Kogan one, it's a 1 gigahertz processor. This one's what? Uh, this one's a 1 gigahertz, 1 gigahertz dual core processor. Dual core. So, so it's effectively two, two of them. So yeah, that, you're right. It might be a bit sluggy. Yeah. So and they're both running the mm. same operating system. So mm. you know, what do you sort of you know? So it has. Oh, a, you know what? I'd always go for the over the over engineered tablet. Yes, but they're more expensive. Oh, that's that's what you pay for. Exactly. Well, that's right. That's right. So um, yeah, it had the Galaxy Tab Two, ten point one. 
It has also a rear-facing 3-megapixel camera and a basic VGA front camera. New features include a micro SD card slot. I'll show you the picture again. There it is. For external storage. Infrared port that works with a preloaded remote control app. Use this app will All turn right. the Galaxy Tab into a universal remote that will con control any device in the home. That uses an infrared remote, go. so that's all right. How lazy are you if you need a remote control for a tablet? It's already on your lap. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Optus will sell the Samsung Galaxy Tab to 10.1 on a range of plans starting from 39.95 per month for two gig of data, compromising of 19.95 plan with a $20 monthly device repayments. Also, 12 and 24 months. All right. Mm, no. Oh, good tablet. Bad, uh, bad telecom provider. I wouldn't touch it. Mm. All right. Now, what are we going to do now? We're going to go and hear from Garth. Garth got a Garth is back this week, and he's got another uh, I, iOS app review. And I'm not sure what he's got this week, but uh, let's uh, cross to old Garthy and uh, see what he's got. Okay. G'day, Glenn and Garth with you once again. Uh, Garth, welcome. Uh, what do you got for us this week? Hey, Glenn. How's it going? Good. Hey, tonight we're looking at um, an app called Voice Brief. Yes. Um, it's a little bit difficult, I suppose, to get the hang of. God, can we start that again? Yep. Sorry. Oh, edits. Okay, and... Glenn and Garth with you once again. Hey, Garth, how are you doing? What do you got for us this week, man? G'day, Glenn. We're looking at uh, Voice Brief tonight. Yes, yes. So Voice Brief is an app that while you're, say you're driving to work or you're on the bus or mm. you're doing something that you can't be actually sitting there looking at your phone. Yes, yep. Um, what this app will do is turn quite a few different services, like I use it mostly with Google Reader, um, or you can use it with your email or Twitter or calendar, weather, heaps of stuff like that. What it will do is actually turn the text from your Google Reader account or whatever service you've hooked it up to into audio. Oh, so yeah. it'll do a, a voice to text, uh, other way around. Instead of voice to text like Siri, it's the other way. It's the text to voice. Yes, nice. So it actually reads out your Google Reader. So you can just start playing it like a use your audio, your media controls on your headphones, like yep. the, the play pause button. And it will just play that. It'll just be like someone reading you out your Google Reader account. Now this is normally a dollar ninety nine, so it's not free. It's not free, but, no. But it's a dollar ninety nine. Cheap. Like who cares? Exactly. You yeah. know, and like I'll just re I'll read a couple of the uh, features and benefits here from the iTunes website. You've got yep. fifty percent off today, so go and get it today. Fifty percent hey, off. And I think it probably will still be because I've seen that that's been there for quite some right. time. <laughs> it's one of those ones. So it's today and every day. And uh, <laughs> so what? What? So a couple of the things that will what couple of uh, applications that will work with is calendar, weather, RSS news, Google Reader, email, Facebook, Twitter, stock prices, um, Gmail notification, and any custom sentence you type. Unlimited number of IMAP email accounts. Wow. Yeah. So basically, yeah, you hook it up to your email. Anything that you get a stream of text coming in, well, not anything obviously, but any of those services, yep. it'll, it'll do the text to speech for you, so it'll read them out to you. Now, it has, it's had big reviews apparently from uh, uh, TUAW, never heard of them, but App Advice and 9 to 5 Mac, I've heard of them, staying on top of things as a breeze. Now, Garth was just telling me before, you know, you, you're driving along in the car, you know, you're always checking your emails, you want to know what the weather is, uh, you might want to get the latest RSS headlines from your newsfeed, you bung this onto your iPhone or iPad and it reads them to you, easy, yep. while you're driving. Yeah. So, Ooh. as I said, while you're doing something else, you know, um, it's good when you can listen to something, but you can't be sitting there looking at it. And I don't know. I never get through my Google Reader account. Does anyone? No. I don't think anyone does. They just sit there and get. And every now and then you go, oh yeah, Mark nine thousand messages is read. Now tell me, do you know, do you know Garth, if it has different accents or? It has two different voices you can choose. There's a male and a female voice. Right, American. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not a bad TTS, text-to-speech engine. Yep. Um, there's better ones out there, but yep. they're, they're all, yeah. The same. It's, it is an app that's a big download because of that. The text-to-speech text engines are quite big bits of software. Right. Um, so you'd want to, uh, you probably can't even download it on, unless you're on Wi-Fi. Now, there is a uh, there is a, an a, uh, in-app purchase. It's called a... Full email read, another dollar ninety nine. Is that is that anything? I have not used that. 
So, yeah, you're, you're telling me something. Okay. Well, there you so go. So, there you go. That's how you get it to read your email. Well, that's the part of the fun of all this. You can read. Yeah. <laughs> you can install so, Gus's recommendation and go for it. Further. Go further. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. No, I, I just, to be honest with you, I mostly use it with the Google. The Google Reader mm. to, to get that stuff. All right. Um, but you can set, like, a playlist. Yep. So, you can set, please, you know, so whenever I, whenever I open it, read me the weather, read me this, and then go on to my Google Reader. Sweet. Sounds good, so, Garth. Yeah. Sounds good. It's nice. All right. Thanks, Garth. We'll see you next week. Good night, guys. All right, Garthy. Good boy. On you, Garthy. All right. So uh, that's another good one from Garth. He comes up with some good ones. And uh, that's uh, another good one. All right. Now, you got any more stories? We better keep Oh, I've got on. a breaking story. Ooh. Breaking story. What, what do you got? Amazon.com. The worst kept secret is no more. The retail and internet giant has finally admitted to opening a data center in Sydney with a post on its Amazon Web Services blog. There the post know. said the cloud computing company owned by eTailing Mammoth Amazon.com had just added an edge location in Sydney. The location will be used for Amazon CloudFront, a web hosting service, Amazon Route 53, a domain, domain name system DNS service. Um, and one of the company's main clouds, blah, 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 blah. So they've started with so far with the cloud service in Australia. Right, yep. Nice. And um, I think that is just the precursor to um, their, um, what you call it, their store. Their app store. Or their, their, their big, their their, big their, store. They're um, around the big store because they're probably thinking, well, we've got a data center. We'll be testing it while we're offering all these cloud services, but meanwhile, we're going to probably do some resilience tests on um, traffic mm. for um, transactions. So yeah, so, so uh, you know, good work. It's, it's if you uh, type in Amazon.com.au, you'll be uh, redirected to the UK site. So it is, it does exist. Right. So um, yeah. So that's all right. So they're coming out with their app store soon. But yeah, that's that's. Uh, I was going to say something, but I forgot what it was now. I suppose cloud the cloud service in Australia they're probably a little bit faster than having them hosted overseas and so forth. So it would be. It would be a lot faster. That's the good bit. Yeah. So that that's not too bad. Uh, look, I was going to say something. I had a comment about something, but uh, look, it's escaped me. It's escaped me. So it doesn't matter. We'll maybe think about it in a minute. Uh, all right, now St. George has released a pay-to-mobile app as well. I think Commonwealth Bank has done the Kaching one. What's that? What's a pay-to-mobile? What does that mean? Like you can pay someone mobile to mobile. Is that what that means? So I could, uh, you say to me that you, uh, well, I want to pay you twenty bucks. You just give me. Oh, the right. Yeah. So I just punch in twenty bucks to your mobile phone number. Right. You get a message. Saying, "Hey, Glenn has just sent you twenty bucks." Oh, right. And I, I put in my account details. That's right. Yep. Okay. And yep. then it goes in. Yep. Good. Yep. So it's that's right. not that's not too bad. Now all the banks are starting to come out with one of these. Uh, some, you know, some similar. Like this is this is the way it's obviously going. And uh, yep. And to make a payment, yeah. So yeah, blah blah blah. We just said all that. Uh, yeah. So the St George app is available on the iPhone, Android, BlackBerry. Hey. <laughs> <coughs> and, <laughs> blackberry <laughs> sorry shouldn't oh, sorry I, I just i just actually choked on the blackberry and and, <laughs> wi and windows 7 smartphones oh, make, make nokia happy oh. hang yeah, on nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. 999 <laughs> bring one you back. hang in there you <laughs> hang in there <laughs> and it will be integrated onto the bank's existing mobile banking app the rollout of the st george pay to mobile app began on the 18th of june and with the Bank of SA and Bank of Melbourne, with St George customers able to access the app from the 25th of June. Oh, that's good. They release it to their sisters before they actually get it themselves. So that's handy. Yeah, good. And I know what I was going to say now about the Amazon. And it's only like this week, actually, I've really, I don't know, maybe I've been deaf or something. But I've only really understood or heard another buzzword, the, uh, the um, e-tailer. Have you, have you heard these, this term before? Like I've heard the term consistently e -tailer. before. Yeah, e-tailer. Yeah, I've never heard. They're of like it. retailer. E I know. I know. I've never really. Uh, Where know. have you been? Hang on a minute. Wait, let me... <laughs> <laughs> have you been a, doing a tech wad what podcast? What? I was say wadcast. A wadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Your wad. Yeah. Um, for um, seven years now. Oh, he's Aussie ticket wadcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is Aussie tickets. And it's a welcome to the wadcast. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where E. Taylor comes from. Where have you been, dude? Oh, I don't know. I just glance over these things, you know. Nothing sinks oh, Nothing sinks Get in. with it. 
and Get with it. So something that has sunk in is R18 Plus classification has finally become a reality. Oh, Mark will be happy. He was always, <laughs> <laughs> he was always going down this path. The R18 yeah. Plus classification for computer games will come into effect uh, next year. That will be the 1st of January 2013, for those who don't know when the year starts and ends. Each state and territory <laughs> in Australia will also pass its own R18 game uh, classification legislation by the end of 2012 to ensure regulation of the legislation. Oh, uh -huh. that sounds hip, doesn't it? Sounds real yeah. hip. Uh, oh, here's a little quick little one. I'll, go, I'll do a couple of little quickies. Uh, angry resellers owed thousands by United Warranties. Now, I had to check the warranty that I got with my TV when I read this, but Australian hardware resellers are lashing out at warranty provider United Warranties as concerns over the company's future. So the warranty provider has in recent weeks lost several large accounts, including department stores Myers and Big W, um, uh, all with confusion about, yeah, can they pay? Can they pay? United Warranties mm -hmm. ABN is still listed as active, still registered uh, status with the Australian Securities and Investment Commission. But as always, if you're going to take these little extended warranties, uh, do your own diligence and, um, yeah, make sure you get the right one. Mm. So, actually, I was, I, as I said, I was going through my warranty on the TV wherever I flung that before the, when the, before the show. Here it is right here because I got mine through the good guys. And uh, I actually and, read and who some. Do they, who do they um, send it through? Well, I couldn't find it. That's what I was looking for. I actually couldn't find it. I thought it, it looks like it may be... Um, domestic and gen, but that's no. I don't know. I think it must be. Would it be their own? Could be their own. Because policy. It's not unusual for them to have their own. Because it doesn't say that there's any underwriter or anything like that. It's just all the good guys warranty. The good guys warranty. The good well, guys warranty. All the stem then. Yeah. They'd, they'd be the underwriters. Because also, just something I, I, I read. I want to read this actually because it is interesting when you read terms and conditions. But there was cancellation of warranty. Now, this is on the back page of this little thing. But did you know? And I'm not saying this is typical of all of them. But this is typ this is uh, specific to this one. But did you know that if you can cancel your extended warranty within the manufacturer's term of warranty and be refunded? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, so uh, cancellation, uh, you may cancel your extended warranty at any time. Uh, we will provide you with a full refund of the money you have paid for the extended warranty if you cancel it during the manufacturer's warranty. There you go. Right, which is the 12 months, right? Yes. So within 12 months usually. Yeah, so you, you know, you get the hard sell from the commission salesman, yeah. then you go home yeah. and ping it. <laughs> yeah. Rethink it exactly. <laughs> That's right. Ping it. Now, did you have any other little stories? No, I'm 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 good. All right. Well, I've got I've still got a few. <laughs> I'm getting through Jeez. them though. There's not too many left. Oh no, there's not too many left. Now, Apple. Oh, just a little Apple one. I'll show you a picture. I've got a little picture here. Apple patent or patents swappable lenses for the iPhone. Now, Engadget mm. has uncovered a patent application that would make the iPhone rear panel removable and replaceable essentially allowing the user to add new filters and lenses. Well, that sounds interesting. And look, mm. I've got a, if for you on the pod, on the, uh, the video, I've got a little drawing. Some, some little boffin at Apple has botched up, uh, you know, botched up a little drawing here, and you can see that, uh, yeah, all these little fun things can happen with the, the back cover. One way, as outlined in the filing, would be to feature two lens and lenses on opposite corners of a single back plate. You take it off, Flip it round and replace it to switch it to the other lens. So interesting. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, another story. Next one is, oh, here's one. Here's a bad one for poor little Apple. Apple investigates computer shop owner over stolen sex pictures. So Apple spokeswoman said the company was looking at the matter after the Sunday Telegraph in Sydney revealed last week that the inner city store, an accredited and official Apple reseller, so it wasn't actually an Apple store, but the Apple reseller uh, copied private pictures uh, of the house of a household named Star and uh, his wife in numerous sexual acts. Not very nice. So no. he he had the bloke had taken the computer to the shop to be repaired. And he was Olympian. No, no one's named him, which is good. Which is which I was surprised. You know that I thought well well thankfully the paper hasn't named him. Like how would you be? Like good on him. Um, as well as uh, the Olympian is among a number of celebrities, as well as members of the general public caught out. Shop staff 
scan machines for intimate material under the encouragement of the store's owner and upload sensitive photos and videos. What a good shared, bloke. Yeah, to a shared what a drive. Good <laughs> I know. But apparently, the store... Own, now, but this is where it probably gets a little bit murky, right? We haven't heard... We don't get the store owner's version. Well, I would imagine maybe there was a, there was a hint of uh, misappropriation or whatever that word is. <laughs> misappropriate. What's that? How do I say that? Misappropriate. Misappropriation. misappropriation. That's right. Misappropriation there with the images. But, um, look... You would be saying that, okay, to, 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 to reformat your machine, I'm going to upload your existing data to my hard drive, you know, and then reload it back down for you. But, but anyway, the store owner denied targeting sexual images but said if people choose to put photos and personal information on their computers, that's their decision. The shop staff are not committing a criminal act um, and the paper had learnt the government has been aware of the legal loophole for years. So Attorney General Nicola Roxon's office said any investigations are a matter for the relevant police force. So well, yeah. I, 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 maybe this is just... Well, no, look, look, at the end of the day, it just amazes me that he's left the stuff on there. Yeah, but most people are probably not aware of how to, to take it off and all this sort of stuff. I just think... Well, I think he's well aware how to take it off. <laughs> well, I think it's pretty clear <laughs> from the photos. Yeah, well, he gets it off all the time. So, But he... he um, he should be. I think this could be a little bit of a beat up after reading it a few times. I think that. Oh, it probably is a beat up. Yeah. Oh, look. I think he's just bought the computer in. They've uploaded the computer. Yes. There's been a few issues with pictures. Maybe one of the staff has done the wrong thing and maybe flashed it around or something. But anyway. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, well, look. As long as as long as his name is not known and his privacy is kept, that's fine with me. That's right. Now, Big W introduces in-app transactions and lay-by. Big W has revamped its iPhone app, making it possible to shop from Big W within the app. And it's, and it's a first for Australia, make lay-bys. So they, were, they've been, they launched it today outside the Big W in bloody Victoria Street or somewhere down your way. And, uh, yeah, they just big party or something going on all day. The app, the oh, app, really? Big party at Big W? Yeah, Can't wait right. for that. <laughs> the app's catalogue is limited to what what's in the most recent three Big W paper catalogues. Okay, they're sent out weekly. Now, each double page of the catalogue delivered to your mailbox has a QR code on the left-hand page. Scanning that code with your phone will bring up all of the items on the two pages so that you don't have to browse the entire catalogue. Good stuff. Go. That's nice. That's nice. I like it. Uh, iPhone or iOS only at this point in time. Yep. Good. All right. Have forget you Forget Android. Yes, forget Android. <laughs> So, so you're you're finished. You're out of stories. I'm done. Good. So am I. I've just got one last thing, and and a little a hark back to the archives, as promised in uh, at the start of the show. Uh, the today, or this week, sees the 100th anniversary of the birth of Alan Turing, a man regarded as one of the most influential mathematicians of the 20th century. He is best known for his work cracking. Best known for his work cracking the German secret code during the Second World War. He is also regarded as one of the pioneers of computer technology. An exhibition devoted to his life and achievements. Oh, yeah, that's over in London. So there you go. Now, back oh, in 2007, we first mentioned Alan Turing when Mark and I were doing the show. We didn't know who the hell he was. <laughs> so we're just gas bagging on about him. And we got some e emails later in the week going, how dare you people not know about who Alan Turing is and all that. So we made it our business to go and find out who he was. And uh, Mark received a letter from Alan Turing. Well, he's dead now, but, you know, letter from beyond. And uh, I'm going to play it for you as Mark, as, as it was played back in 2007 on one of the episodes. So, but, that, but before we hear that, we better say our goodbyes because it's the end of the show. So thanks, Eric. Thanks, mate. No problem. And Looking forward to listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> So, all right, so thanks to the lounge. Thanks for everyone who downloads, as always. And, uh, yeah, good stuff. Thanks for all the people that make it to the Thursday Night Live recording. All right, so let's listen to the letter from Alan Turing, and I'm going to try and find it in my, uh, in my cave, of my archive cave here. Now, actually, I don't know where I put it. Here it is. Hang on. Just hold it. This is another exciting, exhilarating uh, audio. I'm aware of that. <laughs> There we go. Audio. Here we go. It might be in here somewhere. Here we go. All right. And so until next week, it's uh, goodbye from us. Dear Mr. Goodman and Mr. Saltzer, I 
am often considered to be the father of modern computer science. I've provided an influential formulization of the concept of the algorithm and computation with the Turing machine, formulating the now widely accepted Turing version of the Church Turing thesis. Namely, that any practical computing model has either the equivalent or a subset of the capabilities of a Turing machine. With the Turing test, sorry for using my surname so much, I made a significant and characteristically provocative contribution to the debate regarding artificial intelligence. Whether it will be, ever be possible to say that a machine is conscious and can think. I later worked at the National Physical Laboratory, creating one of the first designs for a stored program computer, although it was never actually built. Sad, that really won't be. Anyway. In 1947, I moved to the University of Manchester to work, largely on software and a little bit of hardware, on the Manchester Mark I, then emerging as one of the world's earliest true computers, not Microsoft or Apple or IBM. During the Second World War, I worked at Bletchley Park, horrid name, Britain's code-breaking centre, and was, for a time, head of Hut 8, not Jabba the Hut, just a Hut, the section responsible for German naval, naval, not naval, naval, <clears throat> the section responsible for German naval kryptonian, I can't even pronounce that bloody word. I devised a number of techniques for breaking German ciphers, including the method of the Berm, or bomb, that's pronounced bomb with an E. An e an 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 oh goodness me, the, le the, the language is just so horrid. An electric, an oh goodness me, an electro an electromechanical machine that could find settings for the Enigma machine. In 1952, I was convicted of acts of gross indecency after admitting to sexual relationships with a man in Manchester. I was placed on probation and required to undergo hormone therapy. Good God. I died after eating an apple laced with cyanide in 1954. Clearly the movie Snow White inspired me. My death was ruled clearly as a suicide. So, I hope this information proves that you are not intellectual idiots, but or young imbeciles. But you are the true technology geniuses that you so claim to be. Yours faithfully, Mr. Ellen Matheson Turing. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.